So one of the challenges of preparing your rebuttal slides before you hear the other guy is you have to predict what he's going to say. And I have to say, I didn't see the carrot argument coming. So <laughs> I have no rebuttal for the carrot case. But <laughs> I think when, when you get to arguing that people should get carrots for their care, you don't have a lot of substance there. And you start giving me a hard time about the time. <laughs> so I, I, I think there are, are two points that I will make. One is that long-term follow-up is challenging, and the second, that the costs require creativity. So what's wrong with just coming back and having patients do a fiber scan every year? And so the, the, Curtis tells his patient, he wisely looks at him and says, sir, you don't need your treatment. You're not sick enough. So first of all, people, people don't really like knowing that they have to get sick to get treated. So he says, I feel fine. And then he says, HCV is not the important. And then he says, why the fiber scan? <laughs> <laughs> he asks, why should I bother seeing him again? And he doesn't come back. So I do think it's important to be careful of follow-up fatigue. This is a real case, a 43-year-old woman who comes into my clinic in 2002 with mild fibrosis on biopsy. In 2003, she feels fine with no progression. Same in four, same in five. Same in six, she feels fine, but she stops coming back. In 2013, she comes back with this in her liver. She's got an advanced liver cancer, and unfortunately, she's now getting palliative care and will, will die of this. So I think it's important that we remember that just because someone doesn't have advanced liver disease the first time we see them doesn't mean they never will. Where We don't have crystal balls, and keeping people in long-term follow-up is challenging and expensive. And the last thing is, I'll make the point, is that we, it, we do have to be creative about the cost. So the current model is we pay, the, we basically get the maximum price per pill, which gives you the highest revenue in countries like the US where they say but can't really afford it, and it subsidizes the rest of the world. Options to explore are a lower price per pill where you have reduced revenue in the US, but you have greater global uptake, and this leads to much greater global health benefit, and, I would, and, and some companies are thinking about this. Or you actually have a price per cure, and the advantage of this is you encourage shorter therapy, but it does raise concerns about how many times someone can be treated with expensive costs. I also think we have to think about new models of funding things. I, I've been an advocate for this idea of amortizing the cost over time, so we sort of treat treatment like a house, and like any large expenditures that we currently have, and that you, you, pay, you pay for the drugs over time. And this is, has reduced immediate budget impact. It defers and discount costs, and you get much greater treatment uptake. And actually, for the industrial makers of these drugs, it ties people into using their therapy when they're market leaders. So this is something that I think actually could work. And everybody says to me when I propose this, well, it's never been done before. We've never also had cure for a chronic viral illness. So we have to be creative when we have innovations and try to figure out how to pay for them. So, and I'll just finish by saying, do we really need all those planes? If we took just one or two of them, we could actually pay for all of the hepatitis C treatment in Canada. Thank you.